Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, welcome back. Uh, in the last time, we have discussed the RS configuration nomenclature system uh, for allene and biphenyl uh, type of molecules, which are actually chiral molecules, and also the EZ nomenclature for double bond, and then the concept of pseudo asymmetry. Let us go back and again re inspect the question of relative configuration. There are different nomenclature system yesterday I was telling about three or erythro system and then like and unlike system. Okay. Now, this actually created this relative configuration uh, has created lot of confusion in the literature as you will see as I describe in the next half an hour that where was the confusion. First of all this molecule is what is known as an erythro molecule okay. because what is the it it originated from the carbohydrate erythrose. In erythrose what happens the OHs are on the same side. By the way the, this is the classical D erythrose. Similarly, there will be an L erythrose where the two OHs will be on the left side. Okay. However, an erythro compound of this type where two similar groups are present on the asymmetric carbon. The other groups may be same may not be same. So, the, this nomenclature system is applicable for a system where there are two similar groups at least you need two similar heteroatoms on these two stereogenic centers. Okay. The other groups may be different okay. and then this is erythro, but you have can have another erythro compound where the two x's are on the left side. Okay. This is the another erythro. In many of the reactions, when we do the reactions in organic chemistry lab, we generate stereogenic centers while we do the reaction. And sometimes many stereogenic centers are created. And in many cases, absolute configuration is difficult to determine because you need X-ray crystallography. But the relative configuration you can determine by NMR spectroscopy and other spectroscopic means. So, most of the time we land up with describing what we got in terms of erythro or thrio. Okay. That is why relative configuration uh, is so important concept in stereochemistry, because most of the time we determine the relative configuration and not the absolute configuration. But nowadays X-ray crystallography has become uh, much more uh, has more power now, uh, crystal solving has becoming more easy more routine. So, absolute configuration uh, can be determined for molecules, but in many cases in organic reactions we have to describe the stereochemistry of the reactions in terms of relative configuration. That is why I am spending more time on this. Now, this is the erythro this this is also erythro. Okay. So, if I, I am asked to write the erythro molecule of this formula then I have to write two molecules. Okay. And the what is the 3 O? You know what is the 3 O? 3 O is when the two x's are on the opposite side. Okay. And because it is a Fisher projection formula, actually it is not wise to show the the customary is that you do not show the carbons. Okay. You the carbons are uh, are not shown on the axis, these two the stereogenic center carbons are not shown. So, this is these are the two erythroforms. Okay. Now, you have also been introduced to the different other different projection formula. Okay. What are the other different projection formula? One is Newman projection formula. Now, if you convert this into the Newman projection, what happens? Better see for as you are a, a beginner, so better you do the wage formula, convert it into the wage formula first. So, this is x this is x and this is b and this is b a, sorry this is a and this is the alpha carbon 
and this is the alpha carbon. Okay. That is the wedge formula. You also number it. Suppose this is your number 1 carbon, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. Now, how do you convert it into the Newman? You look along the C 2 C 3 axis or C 3 C 2 vice versa. Either you look from this side or from this side. Now, if you look from this side, that is little bit easier to visualize because the molecules are usually held at the top of the board. So, it is easy to look from the back side. If you look from the back side, the way to write the con, uh, write the Newman projection formula of this is that first of all you know that the front carbon is shown by a dot and the back carbon is by this circle as if the front carbon is blanking the back carbon and the substituents are shown in three lines okay, 120 degree angle with each other. So, when you look at this from this side, this carbon definitely you can visualize and realize that this carbon is at the back and this x will now be on this side and this b on this side. Okay. And what will be the C 1 carbon? So, C 1 carbon is also is, is in the same side of, of, of this C 4. So, this is the C 4 carbon. So, C 1 carbon is actually eclipsed by the C 4 carbon and the x at C 3 this is the C 3 carbon, this is the 2 carbon, the back carbon and this is the number 1 carbon. So, the other x is here and this is the now the A. So, this is the correct Newman projection formula of this fissure starting from this fissure erythro molecule. Okay. Now, the problem is that this is a molecule where all the bonds are eclipsed in the are in the eclipsed form. Today, later on we will uh, do the confirmation of a cyclic system. When we will discuss, we will uh, see what is the stability of this. Obviously, it is not very stable because there will be repulsion between the steric repulsion between these groups which are eclipsing each other and also there is what is called bond opposition strain because the bonds are made up of electrons. So, they repel each other. So, this will be actually this will have the highest energy, highest energy. So, in order to, um, so there is a criticism of Fisher projection formula that the molecule actually does not exist in this form, uh, it because that is the form which is the fully eclipsed form as we see here. So, you uh, better you have to convert it into the form where which is the more stable form and that is why what happens that there is another rule that came which says that write the molecule in a zigzag fashion where the carbon carbon bonds these carbon carbon bonds that means the C 2 C 1 and C 3 C 4 are anti to each other because that will be the stable form okay. and then you have two groups the other two groups. Okay other two groups which which will be uh, if you achha, better first you convert it into uh, directly into the kind of wedge formula. So, if you directly convert it into the wedge formula what happens it will look like this. This is the C 1 and this is the C 4 I am actually turning it this side little bit. So, now this x will be beta will be towards me and we talk about the uh, see the back carbon C 2. So, this x will be towards me and uh, the high, uh, the A. So, we are not talking about hydrogen here we are talking about this is 1 that is 2. So, let us talk complete the 1 1 has this x. So, as I turn it from this side. So, x comes in front and B x is attached to A. So, A goes to the back side and the same thing happens here also x in the front and now it is instead of b you have a. So, this is the 3 carbon. So, that is the wedge formula of this the wedge formula of this. Now, if you want to make it in a zigzag fashion that means your C 4 remains here okay, on this side. So, you turn the C 1 to the top to make it zigzag 
and if you do that C 1 goes to the top and here everything remains the same. So, x is beta and here this is the alpha b, but here as you put a 180 degree rotation. So, x will become alpha and a will become beta because it is a 180 degree operation. So, C 1 goes to that side x will become alpha a becomes beta. Okay. So, this will be the situation. Now, this is the more preferred form of this molecule because this is more stable. Now, you are not eclipsing x, you are not eclipsing b or a, you are not eclipsing most important the c 1 and c 4. So, another nomenclature system which says that forget about the Fischer projection because it is in the eclipsed form. So, you better write the molecule in this zigzag fashion, the carbon chain in the zigzag fashion and then you look at the atoms which are similar which are the hetero atoms that is x and x. If these two x's are on the same side, in this case it is not, this is beta, this is alpha. If they are on the same side that is called erythro like this and if they are on the opposite side that is called trio. Okay. So, based on that, that write that in the zigzag, this is the carbon chain the C chain in the zigzag and then you look at the alpha beta nature of the hetero atoms of similar hetero atoms. If both are alpha or both are beta, if both are alpha or both beta, then that will be called erythro or if both are one is alpha, one is beta or vice versa, then that is called 3 O. Okay. Now, you see this will be according to this definition, this x is beta and this x is alpha. So, this will be according to this definition, this should be 3 O. Okay. Now, you see we started with the erythro form in the Fischer projection. So, if you follow the Fischer projection formula rule, then this molecule, the molecule which is erythro that becomes 3 O in this zigzag rule, which was by the way proposed by a scientist whose no name was Heathcock. Heathcock, he proposed this system, this 3 O erythro nomenclature and uh, based on the zigzag conformation. That means, the actual that is the conformation which the molecule mostly resides. However, that creates a lot of problem because what is erythro in the Fischer projection that becomes 3 O in the zigzag conformation and vice versa. What will be you can practice what is 3 O in the Fischer projection that becomes erythro in the zigzag conformation. So, seeing all these con confusions, there was another scientist who is at MIT. USA, his name was Masamune. So, Mas Masamune said that let us forget about 3 O erythro system, let us have a unified name which does not complicate the scenario further. So, do not call this alpha, alpha, beta, beta erythro, he says that better call this as sin and when it is alpha, beta or beta, alpha you call it as anti. Okay. So, according to Masamune that you still follow what Heathcock said that write it in the zigzag form and now if you see that the similar hetero atoms have beta alpha configuration or alpha beta con configuration, then you call that as anti okay. and if both are beta then you call that as sin or both are alpha you call that and sin. So, that is the present day nomenclature for the relative configuration in case of uh, uh, molecules with multi stereogenic center. You can actually this was extended later for even compounds which are having more than more than one more than two asymmetric center. Suppose, you have a molecule like this. 
you write the carbon chain in the zigzag fashion and see what is the alpha beta status of this excess. Okay. Suppose this is the number 1 carbon 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this molecule will be called C, uh, 2, 3 sin and then 3, 4 sin and also 3, 4 and 4, 5 sin. So, to describe this molecule, you can say that this is 2, 3, this is or just say sin, sin, sin. Okay. That will of course, take care, but it is better to mention the, the carbons that you are considering. Okay. If you change the mid, suppose the middle carbon I change now, this I will make alpha. So, then what will happen? C 2, C 3 anti and then C 3, C 4 anti and C 4, C 5 sin. Okay. So, that is the modern day nomenclature. So, 3 O erythro is a very dangerous thing now to consider, because that uh, as I said that becomes exactly opposite. What is 3 O in this uh, Fisher projection formula becomes erythro in the zigzag formula. Okay. So, now uh, our modern day practice is to use the sin and anti relative conformation uh, nomenclature for this type of molecules. Okay. Yesterday, I was uh, telling about like and unlike and like and unlike, I was a little confused at that time that what is the, how do you say like, abbreviate like and unlike. What was again, I repeat what was like and unlike, that if you have two centers, you determine the configuration at each center. Suppose this is R and this is R, so that is a like system or suppose this is S and this is S that is also a like system. And for unlike system, this is R, this is S or this is S and this is R. Okay. This, was sub, this was proposed by uh, Sivak at the university of, uh, that is ETH, a famous university in Switzerland. He proposed this. So, this is your like and this is your unlike. But as I said, you want to abbreviate this. Then I looked at the books. I thought that maybe this is L k, but then I found in Noshipuri's book that this is written as L and this is written as U. Okay. So, that is the abbreviated. So, just to dispel the confusion which uh, we landed in last time that what is the universal practice of writing this like and unlike conformation. Remember, this is applicable for all systems, there is no confusion at all. Only problem is by looking at the molecule, you cannot see the 3 a erythro, you can by looking at the molecule, you can immediately tell whether it is sin or anti immediately. But for assigning relative configuration for this molecule, you cannot really immediately say that whether it is like or unlike. Why? Because you have to do the configurational assignment R and S, then you can tell whether it is like or unlike. So, it is lot of work. So, that is why Seebach systems was criticized that like unlike, although it solves so much problem that was there earlier 3 a erythro, but it, it has the criticism that you have to do this R and S in order to assign the relative configuration. So, that is a kind of little extra work. In this case, the advantage is by seeing it, you can immediately tell that what is the relative conformation, relative uh, configuration in the molecule. Okay. So, so far we have uh, discussed the last two, three lectures. We have discussed first the chiral environment, how to assign nomenclature for the chiral environment around a stereogenic center. Then we went how to assign the, uh, the, con the configuration and nomenclature for molecules without any stereogenic center, which has got which are actually chiral. Okay. And then um, also we, we, we tried to determine what is this relationship between the 
ligands. See, so far we concentrated on the carbon. So, there are two ways of looking at stereochemistry. Look at the carbon, which is their main cause for giving the chirality. That is one approach. The other is what happens to the groups. Do not forget the, the surrounding groups. Okay. Usually, stereochemistry started concentrating all on this carbon, but then people started thinking of the groups attached to the what is the relationship between the groups, not the relationship between the carbons like in relative configuration. What is the relationship between the configuration of this carbon versus the other carbon? Uh, we are not looking, uh, we are not seeing the interrelationship between the ligands, but yesterday we, we have shown that the interrelationship between the ligands are what are called topicity. The geometric relationship between the ligands in a chiral environment is what is called a what is called topicity and we have identified different types of topicity you know, homotopic which are connected by C 2 symmetry and then heterotopic. Heterotopic has two types one is enantiotopic another is diastereotopic and uh, this heterotopic we are talking about stereo heterotopicity not constitutional heterotopicity. You know. Stereo heterotopicity we have discussed and then we have identified their enantiotopic ligands and then diastereotopic ligands. Enantiotopic ligands were the were connected by the by either I or sigma or S and diastereotopic ligands because the molecule is chiral entirely you started with a chiral center somewhere. So, the molecule does not have any of this any of these symmetry elements improper or proper. Okay. So, that is the relationship between the groups. There is a third now scenario where you have the chiral molecule and then what happens to the space surrounding the chiral molecule? What is the, what is the relationship between the, the faces of a, of a molecule? Suppose you have a suppose I have this double bond compound. Okay. Suppose this is an aldehyde, this is suppose a hydrogen, this is another group, and this is an oxygen. Now, if I place it in the horizontally, then it actually is dividing this entire space into two. One is above this, above this plane, this is a planar molecule, and the other is below the plane. So, there is there are faces, there are two faces, and these two faces may be same, may not be the same in stereochemical sense. How do you know that? So, if I add something now onto this carbon, because carbonyls are susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So, the nucleophile can come from the top or come from the bottom. The question is will it lead to the same compound or not. So, that means, if, if they lead different compounds that means, two faces this two space space on the top and the bottom are different. Okay. Or if they lead to the same compound that means, these two faces are same there is no difference. So, that is another one. So, we have done the relationship between the carbons, relationship between the ligands that is the topicity and now what we are we will discuss the relationship between the on the on the between the spaces that the molecule is dividing the three dimensional space that is being divided into two. Now, what happens? Suppose I take again back to this example say hydrogen and methyl. Now, this is a planar molecule, this is in the plane of the of the board. Now, so this is dividing this space three dimensional space into into two halves basically. One is towards this side, another is the space we cannot see because this is a room behind the this this board that is the other space. Okay. Now, if you add because these two groups are different, if you add a nucleophile from the top. So, what you will get the nucleophile will definitely will take up the a beta position because it is coming from this side it is above the plane of the board and what goes. Uh, so, this will be the uh, as it comes from this side. So, the which will go down. So, which that this double bond breaks the nucleophile comes from the top the double bond breaks and becomes a wedge. So, that and these two remain the same the hydrogen 
and the methyl. So, this is one compound that you will get if it comes from the top face, the face on this side. If it comes from the bottom face, you get exactly the opposite compound. the enantiomer of this. Okay. So, these are enantiomers. So, now, because addition leads to a set of enantiomers, addition from one side leads to one enantiomer, addition from the other side leads to the other enantiomer. So, these uh, faces are first of all these faces are now no longer similar and they now have a we have to assign a name to this because like we have to we will also go for ligands also just just like we have assigned absolute configuration of this carbon which are having attached to four different groups similarly this space has to be given a name suppose I have some restriction that this is a wall the reagent cannot come from the bottom side, the nucleophile has to come from this side, then I will only get this compound and not that compound. Okay. So, uh, there must be a descriptor for the faces that we have. We cannot just say top face and bottom face, because the same compound can be obtained if I write it in a different way, the methyl at the top and the hydrogen at the bottom. Now, to get to this compound, the nucleophile has to come from the back side, because it is written just in a reverse fashion. So, the back side now becomes identical to the front side, if you write it in this fashion. Okay. So, we need to describe the, the topicity of the face, the two relate the relationship between the, the faces. Okay. So, again there is uh, a nomenclature system, very simple. This is a Remember another point that if this is no longer a hydrogen, suppose this is a methyl, then addition of the nucleophile does not create any asymmetric center. Okay. So, then the question of the two faces are same, because it does not matter whether nucleophile comes from top or bottom, it leads to the same molecule. So, there is no question of topicity of the face. Okay. It is there once these two groups are different that is the thing. Now, how to assign the, the descriptor for the two faces? This is done by again giving priority. Now, we have three ligands uh, to this carbon. So, giving the priority according to the atomic number. So, this is number 1, this is number 2 and this is number 3. So, 1, 2 and 3. So, you see what is the direction from going 1 to 2 to 3. So, this is now clockwise. So, this phase that means, when I see from this phase, this looks clockwise. So, this phase will be called a ray phase. Okay. There are some books write it capital and small, both, both are okay, but I prefer the, the small one, the ray phase. Remember, this is actually again it should be written in italics, because these are again coming from Latin words. Okay, so, this is now becomes a red uh, a uh, the ray face and if I say what is the face which is behind this board, if you look from that side the the direction like you study I, I told you that if a fan is rotating in a clockwise direction, if I see from bottom side it is clockwise, then from the other side it will be anti clockwise. So, because I cannot go into the back side and see the molecule, because there is a wall now, which is preventing me to do that. So, I will if I look from the back side, the same direction will now be anti clockwise. That means, the other face is what is called a side face. Okay. So, now the face faces are also have these descriptors, the ray face and the side face. So, if there is a reaction and if I tell that the nucleophile is adding from the ray phase. So, you can immediately figure out that what is the ray phase and you can draw the geometry of the product. Interestingly, as I said that when you write these two systems, this methyl and 
hydrogen if you write in the opposite way. So, now what will happen this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. Now, this side becomes the psi phase and the back side becomes the ray phase. And I told you that if you write this way, the if the nucleophile comes from here, it gives this product, it is the same product from this conformation, from this form if the nucleophile comes from the back. But that means, you are you might be confused that back and front. So, as I said back and front does not have any meaning, you have to assign the ray and psi descriptors for the faces. So, if I write it in this fashion, this side is the ray phase, back side is the psi phase. If I write this molecule in this fashion, now the back side will be the, the back side will be the ray phase and the front side will be the psi phase. Okay. So, from now on the faces should not be front or back, if you want to give stereochemical descriptors you have to say ray and psi. Okay. That will be very important when we discuss reactions stereochemical, the reactions involving uh, stereochemistry, uh, chemical assignment where you generate a new chiral center. Now, by the way this carbon is called a pro it is a pro chiral center because this is not a chiral center, but as soon as you do one transformation you convert it into a chiral center. So, if by one transformation you can convert a carbon into a chiral center that carbon will be called a pro chiral center. Now, this is not only restricted to a carbonyl it is restricted it is also it is applied to systems like this. Yesterday we have seen these molecules these two hydrogens are enantiotropic. Okay. So, here also this carbon is a pro chiral center this is not chiral because all the four groups are not same these two hydrogens are same, but if you replace if you buy one transformation you can replace it by x you immediately convert into a chiral center. So, this is called so that will be a pro chiral center. Okay. So, by one transformation if you can convert a center into chiral center then the center will be called a pro chiral center. And so then what will be the center where there are two transformations needed to make it chiral like if you have this compound C H 3 C H 3 and if I ask you what is this carbon see by one transformation you cannot get a chiral center you have to make two transformations this hydrogen has to be replaced by x and this hydrogen has to be replaced by y then only you can get a chiral center. So, so there are two transformations needed so this will be so when you have these all hydrogens this is called pro pro chiral center. There are two pros because you need two transformations to convert it into a chiral center. Okay. So, we have seen that there will be that faces how to how to give stereochemical description descriptors to the faces which are basically uh, attached to the two sides of a pro chiral center and the ray and the ciphers ciphers have been introduced in the you can also assign because it is a when there are two groups C 2 H 5 and C H 3 when this carbon is okay, when this carbon is a pro chiral center these two hydrogens are enantiotropic and you can as again assign stereochemical descriptor to this hydrogens. Okay. That we will do in the next lecture. Thank you.